your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Knights of the Toxic God is one of the two new origins we're going to be getting with the Stellaris Toxoids species pack. And we now have a massive amount of new information about what this origin actually does, thanks to the Stellaris team that have just finished live streaming and showing this off. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the information we have so far on what this origin does and what it can do for you. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Knights of the Toxic God is a very flavorful origin. Centuries ago, your species' homeworld was visited by a toxic entity. The ecological catastrophe that followed ruined half the world, but allowed an early unification of the survivors in their reverence for the Toxic God. An order of knights has been created to search for the Toxic God, and although many things have changed, the quest continues. So what are the effects? Well, you will start with a unique habitat in your home system and three fewer pops. Yes, it is pretty wild. You're going to get two starting planets here, or at least two starting worlds, a planet and a habitat in orbit above the planet. There is a trade-off though, in that you are going to be having three fewer pops. You will start with the quest for the toxic god situation, which is how we will be discovering the story of this origin. You also get access to the unique Lord Commander, Knight and Squire jobs. Those should be on your Knight's domain habitat in your home system above your planet. You'll unlock powerful modifiers for these Knights and your homeworld through the quests. And yes, that's right, we're getting Knights and quests coming now in Stellaris with this. It will allow access to the Knightly Duties policy and allow the construction of Order's commanderies on subject worlds and it asks the question, what awaits us at the end of our search? And if you're enjoying this video, please, quest for that like button. So we start with a special habitat that has a single Order's Keep on this habitat. The Order's Keep provides us one Squire job, two Knight jobs, and plus one Knight job per 10 pops on the habitat. It also gives us some immigration pull and automatic resettlement destination chance. This building cannot be removed or disabled, and if you're invaded and you lose your Order's Keep, it is gone forever. It does not transfer to any other player, any other empire, it is simply destroyed. So you must make sure to keep hold of your keep. Knights basically use alloys to provide naval capacity, defense armies, unity, and research points. Completing knightly quests will further improve their output, Squires provide amenities and increase the output of Lord Commanders and Knight jobs respectively. And we can see here the approximate production of our two Knights and one Squire is about 15 research, 9 unity. That's equivalent to roughly one researcher and one and a half unity producing pops, four defense armies and nine naval capacity, though it does cost two alloys. So we might be having some alloy problems right at the start of the game. We also get access on this habitat to the special Order's Domain, and that will give us plus four housing and plus three Squire jobs. Each of these Squire jobs gives two amenities and 2% output to our Lord Commanders and Knights. Our homeworld features five unique tile blockers, which are basically relics or some sort of vestige of when the Toxic God last visited our world. Now you don't actually have to be noxious in order to take this origin. It would be very fitting if your knights were noxious. They were some sort of uh, bearers of plague, perhaps. But as you can see, your starting situation is rather bleak. Economically, you have very little in the way of a proper output at the start of the game. You're actually negative on quite a few resources. And the only positive though, is that you do have a reasonably large amount of unity coming from all of these knights and your Lord Commander. Note that we do only have 25 pops, as it was mentioned, three fewer pops. And that is actually going to have a really big impact on our initial start. Due to the low number of pops we have on our capital, only 22, and the low total planetary capacity due to all of these blockers, your logistic pop growth is going to be very, very low. So even though you have two worlds right at the start of the game, your overall pop growth isn't going to be that much higher than if you had only a single planet. And economically, you're definitely going to be struggling. But what do you think about the new Knights for the Toxic God origin? What do you think of the Toxic God? Are they friend or foe? Let me know down in the comments below. 
Well, all of that sounds pretty bad, but there are some uh, upsides. You have the quest for the Toxic God, which is a fantastic and a massive story-driven event chain. If I remember correctly from PDXCon, I was told there is something like 10 to 13,000 words contained within this origin for the different events and different situations that are going to crop up. We have different levels of funding we can choose for our quest for the Toxic God. The regular funding reduces our alloys from jobs by 10%, which is kind of unpleasant, and our monthly energy credits by a whopping 20%, which is really punitive. If we increase to generous funding, we do get plus 10% monthly unity, but that comes at the cost of an additional minus 5% alloys from jobs and an additional minus 10% monthly energy credits. On the flip side, if we spend 100 influence and move to frugal funding, that will reduce our total expenditure on our nights, but these options will slow down our overall uh, rate of progress through the quest for the Toxic God. And as you're going to see in a moment, you really want to complete the quests as fast as possible because the bonuses are very, very good. We also get access to the nightly duties policy. This has three different options. Questing nights is the initial choice. This will benefit our quest, therefore moving the situation on faster. It will increase our survey speed by 15%, anomaly discovery chance by 5%, and that's about it. On the other hand, if we move over to Knight Commanders, that is we put our Knights in charge of our Navy, yes we will no longer benefit from an additional rate to our situation progress, but we get a whopping 20% home territory fire rate, 10% ship fire rate, and a measly 10% army damage. But that increase in ship fire rate and home territory fire rate, when stacked with other bonuses, could be pretty darn phenomenal. The last option is Courtly Knights. You could swap into this for 10 years if you're trying to achieve diplomatic dominance in the galaxy. It gives you a nice plus one envoy and 5% diplomatic weight. If you put that into the galactic community, that is basically an extra 15% diplomatic weight. There's also something that you are not told in the tooltip, and that is the fact that if you take this origin, you will start with orbital habitats as a research option, and therefore you can take this at any point in the game. This makes this origin, apart from Void Dwellers, one of the most secure and fastest way to get some sort of habitat rush. Well, what happens with these quests? I have talked about them, let's have a look. So, there are a whole bunch of quests that follow story chains and events. I'm not going to read through all of these, I don't want to spoil it, but there are so many that they have. And at this point, I want to say a massive thank you to all of my channel members and patrons for your support. It is very much appreciated. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by following the links to Patreon or channel membership down in the description below. The important thing to know about though is what happens when you complete one of your quests. Well, generally speaking, you'll get at least two options. The first of these options is to increase the unity output of your knights and your lord commanders. This is going to be quite a lot of unity, but that pales in comparison to the second of the two options, which is to increase your research output. There is no, and I'm going to state this very clearly, no additional upkeep cost from increasing your research output in this way. And these bonuses to research are only going to stack the more quests you complete. From my interactions with some of the devs, I have been told you could get to some absolutely balmy numbers like 3000 research output on a single habitat by the late game. And that is really quite phenomenal. You also get some quest rewards. I believe these are intermittent. They can give different outputs. For instance, this one is giving some engineering research. And of course, this is scaled by your production. So the higher your research production, the more reward you'll be getting from these quests, which means they do somewhat work as a win more mechanic. There is another option we got to see in the stream. And that is the fact that you can also use some of these quests to improve the tile blockers on your home world. For example, this will add a pool's most venomous to Camland, the capital, giving plus 10% research from jobs output and a whopping plus 10% ship weapons damage empire modifier across your entire empire. That is really crazy if this stacks with other modifiers, if there's more of these plus 10% weapons damage that you can get your hands on as you go around questing. Yes, it is going to be a really slow start for you as a Knight Empire, as a Knight of the Toxic God, some sort of bearer of plague, but the longer you play, the longer you quest, the stronger and more powerful your Knight's Domain will become. 
we did not get to see in the stream whether or not you actually find the toxic god or what happens with that. We don't know yet the nature of this toxic god, whether they really are friend or foe to our species, our empire, as a knight of the toxic god. So for now, we can only speculate. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like some more Stellaris news and content, click the video on screen now.